and I've said it before and I'll say it again and I reiterate it. If it's not on the page, it's not going to happen. But uh, I already said this earlier, so this crowd's already heard it. But I was literally, I was at the lowest ebb of my life when I received the script. Um, I was bankrupt, I was about to be homeless, I had three, two kids that lived with me and, and, and Jen, Jenny, Flynn, and um, I could not believe what had happened in my life. I, I had been, you know, at the top of my career and made plenty of money and lost everything. And anyway, um, this is almost like a, a gift, a prayer that came true. And uh, I've never gotten my, my agent said, um, it's not going to be a series, but you have to sign for five years. Uh, you have to read tonight and decide by tomorrow morning. I read it, I cried, I cried, I cried. And the next morning I went into Paramount Studios where I was supposed to be doing a sitcom to talk to them. And I said, before I talk to you, it's a 10 o'clock appointment, I have to say yes or no to this pilot, to this Dr. Quinn. They said, oh, we know that script. It's a lovely script. It'll never be a series. So fine, just, you know, tech, tell them, you pick up the phone, tell them yes, fine. Don't worry about it. You'll be available for our comedy series, you know. Not too many years later, I actually finally get to play comedy. But at that time, somebody thought I could. Um, all I can say is that I, I can't walk around the set, or we call, I call it set, um, and see all of these faces without remembering the most meaningful moments in my life apart from the birth of my children. Um, Katie and Sean maybe don't remember it, Sean's over here and Jenny, but you guys grew up on that set. I mean, you, you would go to school, you'd come back, and you'd do your homework there on the set and hit craft service. <laughs> That's called free food, mostly candy. Maybe not perfect, but um, I, I, we, we had, and then the twins and the rest of it. it. It was just how unique to be able to play this extraordinary character, and every time we read a script, I cried every single time. And every time I watch the series now, I cry. <laughs> and I was there crying at the time, so what is with the crying? Um, it was... Beth, she... I realized when I read the original script that if I never did anything ever again, I had to do this. It, it touched me at the core, and I was broken. And I think I've heard from a lot of people who feel that this movie have, has touched them very profoundly because they were at a very crucial part in their lives. They were dealing with something really difficult. And and what you've done, Beth, with and, and everybody here, is we've touched people's lives at the very core. We've given them a family. We gave them a way of, of coping with humanity, of coping with death, Eve, with coping with choices, with coping with uh, prejudice, with coping with things that are so pertinent to what's going on today in the world, that, that this is not a series that was from the past. This is a series that is everlasting, evergreen, and sadly, daily pertinent. And I couldn't be more proud of it. I mean, I honestly have not seen as many episodes as you all have. Uh, the reason being that I was working all the time and nine pages a day is a lot to learn. Um, there were days when I wasn't even sure what the plot was, but then everybody else had, you know, done their homework and I just looked them in the eye and I went, oh, that's what we're doing. <laughs> and then I would be remiss if I didn't mention the fact that I came on the set the first day and I met this gorgeous long-haired guy called Joe Lando and I'm going, okay, I'm getting divorced, I'm single, I've been abandoned. <laughs> I'm not going to look at this guy at all. This is never going to happen. Plus, he's like half my age or something. So, um, we start working together. And Joe used to stay on the set after he'd finished. That is not a Joe Lando thing to do. And it's true, isn't it? He would stay there and he'd just stare at me. And after a while, I kind of got the message. He actually kind of liked me. And uh, then we had that wonderful flash flood. Gotta love that El Nino. <laughs> yes, uh, a few margaritas, and uh, and Joe and I finally were able to to realize that we actually cared about one another enormously. And um, you know, the the secret that most people don't know, 
I would, I would have to say that we still love each other and we've always loved each other. But it was like the entire series was shot with us not talking to each other. Yeah. Which I know is very hard for anyone to imagine. But we've done our homework. And the great news is that um, since, since the series, since whatever, you know, we both value that more than anything in the world. We value one another's love. Uh, we totally care about each other. Um, when I have um, troubles in my life, the first person to come and help me is Joe and Kirsten, his lovely wife, who I adore. And, um, and the love that you saw that we played was Michaela and Sully. But, you know, it's hard to deny the fact that there's the two people who cared about each other enormously and care about each other enormously now. So, you know, I don't, I don't think love disappears. I think when you've loved, um, sometimes it takes a different um, shape. And um, I, I just, I love everyone that was on the show. I, I love everything about the show. I particularly love all of you for fighting for us to a degree that no one in the history of television has ever fought for anyone. Um, you know, when I met President Gorbachev, and it was translated to him that the person next to him was Dr. Quinn. He went, Dr. Quinn, Dr. Quinn. I mean, I have met people you can't believe because of this show. I mean, unbelievable. The fans are, are everywhere. They're all over the world. Um, it, it's, it's actually would be hard for me to, to carry it if I didn't feel that I was in some way Dr. Quinn. I think, you know, Beth, by some amazing experience was writing for me. Um, she especially wrote for the broken me that I was at that time. Um, I, my father was a doctor. I came west when I know everyone told me I shouldn't come to California. My parents told me I shouldn't be an actress. I grew up with, you know, the history of medicine and in hospitals and things like that. And everything about Dr. Quinn is what I believe. Every single thing. And as William touched on it, um, Beth uh, let us all really um, give her ideas about what we felt our character might want to do or might experience. And a number of the, the uh, ideas that I gave her, in fact, pretty much everything, ended up being an episode. And, and the same thing happened, you know, in a very equal way with all of us. And that was just so wonderful because usually you show up on a show, they say, this is what you're doing, and now you're dead. <laughs> and that's how it usually was. And Beth said, okay, this is what we're doing, but if you have some great ideas, we'd really love to have them. And they, and Beth put, had, obviously she wrote the most extraordinary scripts. What she did that was even more extraordinary was she had a family, and I say a family, with dogs, because there were all dogs in the trailer, a lot of dogs, of the most extraordinarily talented women who, and men who wrote Dr. Quinn. And without them and without what she did, we would have been nothing, so thank you. <laughs>